Okay guys, here we are in the basement and I am going to attempt to explain how this whole Nintendo Verse system works. Uh, specifically with the PCBs and the ROM sets and the PPUs and the CPUs and the daughter boards and all that stuff. First off, it's worth mentioning that there's two kinds of cabinets. There's a Nintendo Verse du versus dual system and a Nintendo versus Unisystem. The cabinet that I have is a dual system and I have a cocktail version. It's actually called, uh, nicknamed the Red Tent. And you can see it has a monitor on two sides two sets of controls and it can accept a PCB that has two sets of games on it okay there's also a verse dual system upright which is like basically two upright cabinets like glued together and that can have two separate games on it and then there's also the unit system which is typically an up upright I think always an upright and that can only have one game at a time so how does this all work we've got our dual systems and unit systems uh, some can have one game some can have two games so I'm going to attempt to explain it I have it kind of set up over here so let's start with this this we're going to call the main PCB and this main PCB is common across all the systems, all the games, everything. It's essentially the place where you're going to stick your games, okay? And this PCB is used in the unit systems, it's used in the dual systems, it's the same PCB for all of them, okay? And the PCB, the model number here is MDS05 CPU. I know there's like a couple variations on that number. I'm um, just looking around here. Yeah, there's MDS04 CPU. Um, I'm guessing they're just different revisions, but they're all compatible with each other, and they all work in the, in the versus unit systems and the versus dual systems. Okay, so we start with our main uh, PCB, which is generic for all the systems. And on the main PCB, we have two columns here, okay? And this is for game number one, and this is for game number two. And we have, so let's look, let's look at the right side right here. So we have six spots here for ROM chips, we have a spot for a CPU, and we have a spot for a PPU. Okay, so that's game number one. And then game number two is the same thing. Six spots for ROMs, a PPU, and a CPU. I probably am getting those backwards, but one's for a PPU, one's for CPU. Okay, and then if you look down here, we have dip switches. Uh, this set of dip switches controls the game on this side. This set of dip trips control dip switches controls the games on that side. Now, if you have a unit system, you can only use one side because you can only show and display one game at a time mostly because you have one single monitor so you're going to take this generic PCP PCB and you're going to populate only one side of it because you have a unit system with one single monitor and so you can only use one half of the board. If you have a dual system, you can populate both sides with games and have two games on one PCB because you have two monitors, two sets of controls, um, and you can have two separate games. Doesn't matter, you can mix and match games, but you can have two separate games. On some games, though, they actually interact with each other, like, for instance, uh, baseball. You, you, you would put two sets of baseball ROMs, two PPUs, two CPUs, and you would actually have head-to-head -head baseball uh, using two monitors and two sets of controls. Um, but for the most part, most games use one monitor, so you can use one unique set of chips on either side. Um, again, unit system, you can only use one half. Dual system, you use both halves because you have two monitors. Again, generic PCB, same on all the systems. The only thing you're doing is you're swapping out the game information in these areas. Okay, so what is a game? For the most part, a game is comprised of six ROMs. That This contains the game data. A PPU, which is kind of a security chip. Uh, this actually has color information on it, and if you use the wrong PPU with the wrong set of ROMs, you'll actually see the wrong colors. Uh, for it's my understanding that if you use the wrong PPU, you'll still see the game, but the colors will be messed up. So this chip was basically to minimize piracy because each chip only works with a handful of games. Okay, and then you have a CPU, and this CPU is common across all games. It's interchangeable. Uh, these are actually readily available, these CPUs. You can get them at mikesarcade.com, and the number is RP2. 
RPT2AO3H, RPT-AO3H, and that is the CPU. I know there is some slight variations on the CPUs, but as far as I know, these are all interchangeable, and I have had uh, no problems using this CPU with all of my games um, when I suspect I have a bad CPU and swapping them out. Um, and for the most part, all games, at least Nintendo first-party games, for the most part, use six ROMs. Some games I've seen use five, but basically it's typically six, a PPU, and a CPU. So, for instance, if we wanted to populate this generic PCB, and you have a unit system, you would take these six ROMs, you put them right here, you take your PPU, you put it right here, you take your CPU, you put it right here, and you would have one game on here. And then if you wanted to add a second game, you would just take another game, like this, and you'd put another six ROMs here, another PPU, and another uh, uh, CPU, and then you, then you would ha now have two games on one PCB, you take this PCB and you would insert into your dual, your versus dual system, and now you'd have two games on that system. Now, some games are not six ROMs, a PPU and a CPU. <laughs>